I want to take time to look at this verse of Scripture. It's Leviticus 19, verse 32. The Bible says, You shall rise before the gray-headed and honor the presence of an old man and fear your God, for I am the Lord. Join me as we pray together. Father, it is my prayer that as we take just a few moments to honor these who are precious, May they never forget that they are forgotten. Oh, Father, may they understand that even in their senior years, their golden years, they have so much still to contribute. And I thank you for this passage of Scripture in the book of Leviticus. And I pray that today you will help us give them honor where honor is due. And we ask these things in your name. Amen and amen. Well, This verse in the book of Leviticus uh, might seem out of place. For you see, the book of Leviticus got its name from the Old Testament tribe called Levi. And Levi was the family group from which the priests and servants in the tabernacle were to come. Uh, The book of Leviticus contains the rules and the regulations for the conduct of how the Jewish priests the construction of the tabernacle, and all the various offerings and sacrifices that were offered unto God. When you get to chapter 19, the text that I just read, it's sort of a commentary on how we ought to apply the Ten Commandments. Then all of a sudden, in the middle of this chapter, you have this verse of Scripture that seems very much out of place. In fact, the text I just read to you, I read to you out of the New King James. I want to read to you a different translation that I even think says this verse better. It says this, we ought to show respect to the person with whom? White hair. (laughs) And honor an older person, and in so doing, you will honor our God. For I am the Lord. This little verse reminds us how the respect of our elders and the reverence for the Lord go hand in hand. You see, I believe a people that appreciates and respects their senior saints has a good foundation in which to build upon for the ministry to youth and children. Likewise, a church that is always willing to honor its past has hope for its future. Amen? It is good for us to celebrate and honor those who have reached these special milestones. So what I want to ask is this. Would it be possible for us to come to the place that we could all say together, gray is a beautiful color. Gray is a beautiful color. Now, I just want to tell you, as I began to gray, I wasn't so sure it was a beautiful color. But the more my head has turned gray, I am grateful for all the many things the Lord has taught me. So I think about that text. I think about you as senior adults, as golden agers there's a couple things i want to remind us as a congregation about this morning the first one is this we want to honor your perseverance we want to honor your perseverance now there was a dear lady she was in her 80s she had been through a lot she was a double amputee and confined to a wheelchair and every time i'd go by to see her she would look at me and this is what she'd say she said preacher if anybody tell you these are the golden years You looked right in their face and said, they're lying. (laughs) They're lying. One seasoned saint was overheard one Sunday morning saying this, old folks are worth a fortune. We have silver in our hair, gold in our teeth, stones in our kidneys, and lead in our feet. (laughs) It reminds me of the old preacher that loved to go by and see some of his senior saints. And so as he was visiting with this particular lady, they were having coffee. And so he said to her, he said, let me ask you a question. Do you ever think much about the hereafter? And she replied, I do all the time. No matter where I am, whether I'm in the living room, in the kitchen, even when I'm down the basement, preacher, I'm always asking myself, now, what was I hereafter? <laughs> Despite the challenges of growing older, Solomon in the book of Proverbs reminds us of some important things. In Proverbs 16, verse 31, he says, The silver-haired 
head is a crown of glory. It is found in the way of righteousness. The glory of a young man is their strength, and the splendor of the old man is their gray head. That's in Proverbs 20, verse 29. You may or may not have ever heard the story of George Mueller. It's inspirational. But one of the things that he was known for is his prayer life. He prayed specifically for five friends that he knew were far from the Lord. And he asked the Lord each and every day, Lord, before I am called heavenward, I want to see these five friends come to faith in Christ. Well, it wasn't but just a few months that one of those friends came to faith in Christ. It took an additional 25 years uh, for two others to come to faith in Christ. And then that fourth one came to faith in Christ, but that fifth one was an old, tough nut, as you might say. After praying for nearly 50 years, God rewarded George Mueller for his perseverance. And after his funeral, after his celebration of life, that fifth friend sought out someone and said, you know what? What George had was real, genuine. I want it for myself. And even though he didn't see that fifth friend come to faith in Christ, this side of glory, he celebrated it on the other side of glory. Now, let me ask you a question. 50 plus years. How easy would it have been to just throw your hands up and give up? But he didn't. He continued to what? Pray and believe that God was going to do that which only God can do. You see, I believe with all my being, many of you who are in your 70s, 80s, 90s, and even in your hundreds, a century, man, you've gone through a lot in your lifetime. And today, I want to take a moment on behalf of this congregation to thank you for your perseverance. Your grandkids and even your great-grandkids can't believe that you once lived where there was no electricity. There was no indoor plumbing. And guess what? There wasn't even a remote control to operate your black and white television. In fact, you didn't even have television, did you? (laughs) And they can't believe that you used to ride in a vehicle that didn't have the modern safety features we take for granted today, like a safety belt and airbags and XM radio. Wow. You see, you grew up in an era when school was begun each day how? With prayer and saying the Pledge of Allegiance. When your parents told you, now you better mind or I'm going to send you out to the yard, you knew what that meant. You're going to be sent out to the yard to get a what? Switch. If that switch wasn't right, what did mama tell you? Boy, go back out there and get you a better one. You know what I mean when I say switch. Many of you knew how to balance what it was like to live on a farm. So you did things on the farm prior to when you went to school. And many of you, because of your responsibilities on the farm, weren't able to get as involved as young people today are in all these extracurricular activities because you had to come on back home and do what? Get back on the farm. So I just want to tell you, your parents worked hard in order to provide food on the table and a place for you to lay your head. We owe you so much. And you have loved and sacrificed just like your parents did. And in so doing, you have provided not only this generation, but future generations. Today, on behalf of this church, for each and every one of you who are considered a golden ager, I thank you for your perseverance. I also want to thank you and honor you for your faith and devotion. Your faith and devotion. You see, you grew up in church. In many cases, going to church when you were growing up wasn't even up for discussion. As the old saying goes, you were drugged to church even before you were what? Born. And in so doing, you've made sure that your children were raised in church. And you taught them to respect the principles contained in God's word. You tirelessly have given of yourself to help make the ministry of God's church strong and effective. Honoring and serving Christ was the centerpiece of your life as you grew up. 
You've lived out your faith as you passed along to your children and your grandchildren. And for some of you, now you're getting a chance to enjoy passing it along to your great-grandchildren. As you look back over the span of your life, you're seeing the fruit of your labor of righteous and faithful living. <coughs> so not only do we thank you for your perseverance, but we thank you for your faith and your devotion. The church and the community could count on you because you are a faithful part of each, teaching us all under your care. God loves you. You reminded all of us who would be willing to listen. God is a loving God, but listen, he is holy and just. You are always reminding us that everyone does what? Sin. And that sin breaks God's heart. But you were so good to share with us how Calvary was God's demonstration of where Christ paid our debt. How? In full. You rejoice when one of our family accepted Christ and later was baptized where? Down by the riverbank. Amen? <laughs> so we honor you for your perseverance. We honor you for your faith. We honor you for your devotion. We also honor you for your example. Your example. You see, for many of you who grew up in the Depression and came out of that era, faith wasn't something you just talked about. Faith was something that you what? Lived out. You saw it each and every day. Your life it is an example for others to follow. I'm just going to take a moment. My daughter my mom and dad's granddaughter, when she went to Meredith, decided on the weekend she was going to go over to grandma and grandpa's house. And oftentimes she would call us on Saturday night and she said, y'all got to be here. This is better than any television show I've ever seen, watching these two communicate. So that period of time, those four years, almost five, when Jessica was at Meredith getting her college education, as I look back, how grateful I am for the weekends that my mom and dad got a chance to sow into her life and allow her to know that she is a special young lady with a special calling who now she has surrendered and serves exceptional children each and every day in the classroom. You see, your example of service and sacrifice because you lived it out has left big footprints for all of us to follow. Let's just be honest. Your generation was a generation that left up an example of generosity like no other. For many years, you lived well below your means so that you could give well above your means to the work of God. You've left a legacy that will live on long after you receive your eternal reward in heaven. Countless people within our church and community and around the world have experienced the love and compassion of Christ and the message of the gospel because of your faithfulness to sacrifice and to give. We honor your example of hope and optimism. Hope and optimism. You have learned that even in the toughest times, God is greater. Listen, I was visiting with Melvin Slate yesterday morning, and that man just blesses my heart. I had seen him early in the week, just the day after his incredible heart surgery there at Baptist. He was sitting in a chair. He was looking forward to coming home. So I was really surprised yesterday he was still in the hospital. So I went by to see him in room 504. I could tell that he wasn't really doing all that well. He had said, Preacher, it has been a rough day, a sleepless night. I just need you to pray. I just looked at him and I says, Melvin, I'll be glad to do that. But what word could I continue to share with the people at Westfield? You know what he told me? <laughs> this is what he told me. In spite of this setback, I just want you to know, preacher, God is still good. God is still good. And I looked at Melvin and I says, you're right, because he's good. All the time. All the time. God is good. 
If we had time this morning, take the microphone and go by and ask each and every one of you. In some of those times when you and your husband, you and your family wondered how you're going to put food on the table, you saw God come through. Amen? <laughs> you saw God provide when you didn't know how you're going to rub two nickels together and take care of the things you had to do for the coming week. But God provided. And I believe with all my heart that testimony of perseverance, of faith, and devotion has been an example that I pray many of us will be willing to follow. It reminds me of a beautiful little story. Her name is Maureen Jones. She's 92 years old. She's always lived on her own on her own, but she had begun to experience some health issues, and so for the well-being of her son and daughter who lived away from her, they convinced her that she needed to think about going into one of those retirement places, one of those nursing homes, one of those assisted living places. So her daughter and her went to speak to the administrator, and I guess as you often have to do, you have to have kind of an interview and talk about the various things that are going to be expected, and then that administrator judges your ability and maybe the level of care that you might need. So they finished up the interview, and the administrator was about to go into the various kinds of rooms, the styles of rooms, and the style and the kind of care that Maureen could expect. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, what she say? She says, "I already love it." And the administrator looked at her almost in bewilderment and looked at the daughter and says, "But she hasn't even let me tell her what the rooms are going to like, and even go down and show her one." And Mrs. Jones was a Beautiful smile on her face says, ma'am, I don't need to see any room. You, you see, I need to let you know something. I learned a long time ago, contentment is something that you decide on ahead of time. You see, it's the decision I make every morning when I wake up. For we all have a choice. I can stay in my bed recounting all the difficulty that the previous day has brought me. Or I can get out of bed and be thankful for the many ways God has blessed me. And I just want you to know, I choose the latter. So every day I'll be out of bed. Lord willing, and I'll be thanking him for the way God has blessed me. I want to make today's message real simple. But I've got a special appeal for each of you who are golden agers. I just want to start off by saying this. The thing that concerns me, and the thing that burdens me, is I hear so often those who are in their 70s and 80s saying the following, well, preacher, it's time one of those youngins takes over the wheel. I'm retired, and I have planned all my life to travel here, there, and yonder. It's time somebody else do what I have been doing. I just want to share a little thought with you. Did you know that God doesn't have any retirement plan in the Scripture? You look at the people in the Old Testament who God chose to be leaders. They weren't young whippersnappers. They were old and wise. So I just want to make this appeal to you. As you begin to think about all that I have shared with you. It might be easy and you may be tempted to think that I am just have nothing to contribute. But can I just tell you this? If you're still breathing and your heart still beating, God isn't finished with you yet. If you're still breathing and your heart still beating, no matter what your age is, God isn't finished with you yet. Whether it's your family, the club that you've been involved with in the community, or even the church. You need to know and be reminded your life still makes a difference for God's kingdom. So we need your spirit of perseverance. We need you to continue to remind us that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We need your example of faith and devotion. You'll never know how much it means when you begin to testify, God is faithful. God is faithful. You inspire us to remember that a life of faith is what? Worth all the effort. 
I'm just telling you, you don't have to know Melvin very long. When you sit down with that gentleman, you walk away thinking, no matter what it is, life brings my way. It is well worth the effort. Amen? <laughs> and I'm here to tell you, we need your example of hope and optimism, especially in the world in which we live. We realize that you, not, you may not be able to do all the many things that you once did. But we need you to encourage those who are coming behind you as they pick up the slack. There are young leaders and workers who need pats on the back and words and notes of encouragement. Our children and our young people need you to put your arm around them so that everybody around you can hear you simply say, son, daughter, I just want you to know, I'm very proud of you. I'm just here to tell you that you may feel that you have lived your life and now it's time for you to go on easy street. But I'm here to appeal to you, please, don't take the attitude of the world. Reassign yourself, re-up, stay in the game because the church and the Lord needs you. They need that example of perseverance. They need that example of faith and devotion. And they need that reminder. God is faithful. Amen? Join me as we pray. Oh, Father, in these few moments, I want to thank you for each and every person who would be classified as a golden ager. And Father, I want to thank you so much for what they've meant to me, what they've meant to this community, what they've meant to this church, but most of all, what they've meant to their family. Lord, when others would have given up and thrown their hands up, they have always remained steady and sure. They were dependable. They could be counted on. So, Father, during this time of invitation, will you continue to use them to spark within the rest of us a willingness that you can do for us what you have done for them. And we'll thank you. For it's in your name that we pray. Amen and amen.